While most people realize that countries like the United States, Russia or Canada are federations, there's practically no one that knows that Austria is also such an entity. As such, the states of Austria are practically unknown to the world. Lower Austria is one such example, and today that's what we're gonna talk about. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Lower Austria, Niederösterreich in German, is the largest of the nine states that make up the Republic of Austria. It's called Lower Austria because of its downriver location on the river Enns. The 1.7 million people that live here can enjoy a spectacular scenery. Lower Austria has got plenty of mountains, rolling hills, the Danube, historic towns, medieval villages and over 4,000 caves. While this state is by no means poor, it does have the second lowest GDP per capita in the country, and there's a historic reason for that, which we'll discuss later on. Austria as a whole might be a popular country, its constituent states though are not. This video will help you get better acquainted with this corner of the country, so don't go anywhere just yet. The best way to learn about a new land is to start with its history. The first thing you need to know is that Lower Austria is pretty much the heartland of the country. Charlemagne conquered and incorporated these lands in 788 AD and in time, together with Upper Austria, came to be known as Marca Orientalis, the Eastern Borderlands. That Latin name morphed into Osteriki in Old German, which today is Österreich, literally the Eastern Realm or Kingdom. The other thing you need to know is that Lower Austria was the scene for one of the most important battles in European history, the Battle on the Markfeld. It took place in 1278 between the Bohemian Czech army of Ottokar II and the army of the German king Rudolf I of Habsburg. He was allied with King Ladislaus IV of Hungary and these three kings together gathered the largest cavalry in the Middle Ages, 15,300 mounted troops. Ottokar was defeated and killed in the battle, and his dynasty was restricted to Bohemia and Moravia. On the other side, Rudolf secured the duchies of Austria and Syria for his family. This is now considered to be the beginning of the ascendancy of the House of Habsburg, one of the most prominent and powerful royal houses of Europe in the second millennium. St. Pölten is the capital city of Lower Austria. It replaced Vienna as the capital in 1986. St. Polten is a very old city. The oldest parts sit on the site of the Roman city Aelum Ketium from the 2nd century AD. During World War II, St. Polten was one of the cities where resistance groups against the Nazis activated. They tried to oppose the regime through sabotage and propaganda, but had few political or military successes. Many of them were betrayed, caught and executed, but their actions are commemorated to this day. On a lighter note, St. Pölten today is a very well-developed city with a flourishing economy, good infrastructure and well-maintained buildings. Obviously, there is plenty to see here, from churches and museums to palaces and even castles. St. Pölten might be a small Central European city you never heard of, but it should definitely not be overlooked. With regards to Lower Austria's economy, there is, as I said, a reason why this part of the country is doing slightly worse than the other states. You see, after the end of the Second World War, Lower Austria fell into the Soviet zone of occupation. While in other parts, the Austrian economy could already begin to be rebuilt, that wasn't the case in Lower Austria. Here, many companies and factories were left destroyed, while others were managed by USIA, the Administration for Soviet Property in Austria. The Soviets also imposed the local administration, which in many cases included many local communists. Also, a good chunk of Austria's war reparations to the USSR was made in the form of crude oil extracted in Lower Austria. It was only after 1955, after the Soviet administration was withdrawn, that the economic reconstruction of Lower Austria began. But even after that, the state's proximity to the Iron Curtain greatly diminished its economic potential. If you believe that large populations cannot be served electricity by renewable sources, just take a look at Lower Austria. Since 2015, the electricity consumed by Austrians in this state has been generated entirely from renewable resources. 
About 30% of electricity is produced by over 700 wind turbines, 59% from hydroelectric dams, 8% from biomass and 3% from solar panels. And these figures will probably increase and Lower Austria will become a great exporter of electricity in the near future. That's because the country's goal is to produce 100% of its energy needs from renewable sources by 2050 or sooner. Currently, about one quarter of Austrian electricity comes from burning fossil fuel, so there's still a lot of work to be done. Nevertheless, Lower Austria and Austria as a whole serve as a role model for the rest of the world. If you choose Austria as your tourist destination, there's a good chance you'll end up in Lower Austria too. First off, Vienna sits within the state, although it's not a part of it. But that means that your first experience of the country, outside of the capital, will be of this state. From January to December, tourists flock to Lower Austria and there's a good reason why. There is a huge selection of cultural centers here, such as historic cities, towns and villages, monasteries and of course castles. Agro-tourism is a big thing here too, so if you want to find out what's it like to live in an alpine farm, this is the place to be. Since this is Austria we're talking about, you can of course always head for the mountains. The number one destination in that case is the Viennese Alps. This is a large tourist region where any mountain lover will feel right at home. There is one place in particular that you simply have to visit if you're in Lower Austria the Wachau Valley. This is a picturesque valley formed by the Danube River and it's the number one destination for tourists. The elegance of the Wachau monasteries, castles and ruins are complemented by the splendor of urban and rural architecture. The cultivation of vines also attracts wine connoisseurs from all over the world. In this area basically every village and town has something wonderful to offer. It's no mistake that UNESCO granted the title of World Heritage Site to this entire valley. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.